Hello, my name is Michael Osborne and this assignment is for Wallace State Community College in Hansville, Alabama. My instructor is Mrs. Terry McGriff Waldrop and this is about the last lecture. The last lecture introduces Randy Pausch as a professor at Carnegie Mellon, Mellon University in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. At the very beginning, Professor Pausch makes a very powerful statement that really draws the audience in. If you know you were going to die shortly and you and you had one last lecture to give, what would you say to your students? For Randy, it wasn't hypothetical. He wasn't he was fighting pancreatic cancer and in uh, 2008 he lost his battle. Before then, he made a recorded lecture entitled The Last Lecture. It's not a talk of death, but rather on how to live life. More specifically, achieving childhood dreams and how you can try to achieve them. In this video, Randy Pausch talks about his dreams enabling the dreams of others and what it lets you achieve and what it is that lets you achieve your dreams. The first part of this assignment, I was asked to name eight life lessons that Professor Pausch imparts on those that attended and also those of us who are watching this lecture post-modem. Professor Pausch touches on over 20 different topics that we can all use to be more successful leaders and followers. He is also trying to leave us with the wisdom and advice that will let each and every one of us achieve our dreams. Needless to say, I was so taken back with this lecture, much like I was inspired by the book, The Noticer by Andy Andrews. Since the noticer, I have tried my best to find positives in the decisions that I am facing in my life instead of the negatives, um, instead of the negatives. And I have to admit that I'm feeling much better about things today than I was just weeks ago. So much so I gave this book to my wife and asked and asked her to do the same. I mention this because much like the noticer, Professor Pausch is imparting a philosophy to have us reflect and think about how we are living our lives and how we can make some adjustments in the way of our thinking that can really bring about positive change. Narrowing down what to talk about was a bit more challenging. As I found as I found a takeaway from so much of what he had to say. Instead, I will try to focus on those areas that I know I struggle with and I want to improve. The first of that being brick walls. Brick walls are there for a reason. They let us prove how badly we want things. Brick walls let us show our dedication to something. They they are there to separate us from people who really don't want to achieve their hot, their childhood dreams. Brick walls um, also show our dedication. What am I willing to do to achieve this goal? He ties the concept in to be good at something. It makes you valuable. Have something to bring to the table because that will make you more welcome. When you don't get what you want, you get experience. This made me think. Randy says it so well. Experience is what you get when you didn't get what you wanted. This is when I had to take a moment and really think about the experiences in my life and see that the times that I failed was really when I learned the most. I got the most out of it when I failed. And my failures led to my successes and the ones I remember the most. The most recent is an interview for a maintenance position with uh, Sarah Wire. I felt confident. I had a lot of experience. I felt like the job was mine. I left the interview, interview waiting for the email saying that I had moved on to the next step. Instead, in less than an hour, I was notified that they weren't going to move forward. That really hit me hard. 
Um, I was stunned. I was hurt. I was angry. Um, trying to figure out where and why I went wrong. It took a couple days um, when I started analyzing how how I might have failed and how I won't what can I do in the future not to make the same mistakes that probably cost me the job or maybe I didn't express my experiences enough in order to impress those that I was interviewing with. Um, so after a little reflection and thinking about it, um, I decided to take this experience and use it as a learning experience. Okay, I didn't do this so well. What could I do better? Um, things along those lines. And uh, thinking positively, I, I have an upcoming interview with Ray Hall for another maintenance position. So I definitely want to take an opportunity to... Um, use that lesson to improve myself and I, I really feel that I can do so much better now than what I did before. Uh, another thing that really kind of stuck with me and is where he says it's not what you say but how you say it. Randy shares an example where two people say the same thing but they say it in different ways. I don't know is different than well, I don't have much information, but one of my star faculty members is here and he's excited. I want to learn more. I mean, how you say things, you know, a lot of times we can be rash and we can say things. Well, I don't know. Just get out of my face or however. And you switch it up. You diffuse the situation. Well, I don't know if that's a good idea, but. You seem excited about it, so why don't you tell me more? Being on the other side of that conversation, you, you'd be like, oh, wait a minute. I'm, I'm not going to be rejected again. So let me phrase what I need to say in the best way that I know how, and let's see where this goes. I mean, that's, that's pretty powerful thinking. Uh, I go on to say, I wish I had supervisors in my past that would have practiced this. Instead, in the military and industrial maintenance, in the industrial maintenance world, there is often not a whole lot of time for pleasantries, and it's rubbed off on me in, in not so good ways. Um, I really want to make this change to my future endeavors, as I remember all too well how it made me feel and really dislike having to see and work with these people after an incident like that. I just remember thinking to myself, I understand the nature of our business and I want us to succeed, but don't you think you could have approached that situation differently? I want to make sure that when I'm in these situations that I don't perpetuate the same behavior going forward. There are moments that change your life. Ten years later, if you know in retrospect that one of these, pardon me, ten years later, if you know in retrospect that it was one of those moments, you're blessed. But to know it at the moment, wouldn't that be something? For me, I think it was a moment when I faced the decision to leave the military after four years or get out. You know, it was a time where, okay, I've done moved all this time. I'm missing my family. I'm missing my friends. You know, everybody's kind of partying. I was young. Um, I, I'm tired of being told what to do. I, I want to live my own life. So a supervisor pulled me aside and um, <clears throat> um, I think it was a supervisor talk, talked that out with me and asked me what my plan was. Where was I going to live? What was I going to work, do for work, etc.? He made me realize that I really hadn't thought it out 
and from that point he helped me be better at my job. An important factor that I do think is how to work and play well with others. Um, what comes around goes around. You can't get there alone. To tell the truth, to tell the truth, be earnest, apologize when you screw up, and focus on others, not yourself. My life experiences in the military and even life after the military has presented me with the opportunity to meet and work with a vast variety of people and personalities. Adapting to how others are, trying to see their strengths, and finally coming together to achieve a goal has been a skill I constantly find myself using. I spent 20 years in the Air Force, moved seven times, been all around the world, so you can try to do the math on how important this might might be to accept and to use and to just come together and, and do um, a, a common goal. Nobody is perfect and we all make mistakes. Knowing how to apologize properly is something we could all take lessons on. Randy says, apologize properly. A good apology has three parts. I'm sorry. It was my fault. How do I make it right? This is another area I know I need improvement in. It's all too easy to not admit one's faults. After hearing Randy, I am inspired to want to make positive changes. When nobody says anything to you anymore, that means they gave up. Your worst critics can be your best coaches. It's a tough love. Randy tells the story of one of his most grueling football practices. When it was all over, one of the assistant coaches came over and said, Coach Graham rode you pretty hard, didn't he? Randy replied, yeah. The assistant responded, that's a good thing. When you're screwing up and nobody says anything to you anymore, that means they gave up. Randy's takeaways. When you see yourself doing something badly and nobody's bothering to tell you anymore, that's a very bad place to be. Your critics are the ones telling you that they still love you and care. This was a major experience for me. And how Professor Pausch phrased this really hit home. This is one lesson I definitely want to learn from and pass on to those I interact with in the future. Randy goes on to say that the three most important words he gives as advice, if I could only give three words of advice, they would be, tell the truth. If I got three more words, I'll add all the time. What else is there to say that each and every one of us needs to pay close attention to this one? It could really change the world. Finally, the five words he says are the most important words to live by are shared in his values. Learn through experience, which he hoped to pass on to others are integrity, honesty, character, hard work, laughter, and gratitude. Pausch's last lecture has received a great deal of praise and attention, even by the likes of Oprah Winfrey. He ends the lecture by saying, Did you spot the head fake? This lecture is for his children. Lead your life the right way, then karma will take care of itself, and dreams will come to you. Thank you.